anybody home? All there is. Come on in, Sam. You're all I want to see. Just thought I'd stop by for a second on my way home. By way of an innovation. <laughs> Tired out. Mm. Looking backward. Great waste of time. Have some sherry, Sam. What happened at the trustees' meeting yesterday? It wasn't there. I had to go over to Pretty Prairie to see about some land I'm buying. More land? You must own half the state already. Remember the day you, you drove up in your brand new delivery wagon? <laughs> Do you realize that's over 50 years ago? 50 years ago, the day Midwest Inn opened. Good morning, Chris. Miss Bishop. A been promoted. Chris, I can't stop you. Yeah, yeah, but I'm not just janitor no more. Yes, I'm late. No. I got so excited no. I forgot my registration no. money and had to run all the way yeah, home for it. I'm gardener now. Oh, that's wonderful, Yeah. I know that some of you have walked miles to get here. And that every day for four years, you'll have to walk those miles through rain, sleet, and snow. But I know this. The end will pay you for those hardships. Because the end is wisdom. Wisdom is first cousin to freedom. And freedom is the glory of our nation and our people. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God, here on free land, under free air, we have tried to build a house for wisdom, free to all. Look favorably upon us, O oh Lord. For today, we light a lamp of learning. May it shine through the years to be. Amen. Wisdom is the first cousin of freedom, and freedom is the glory of our nation and our people. Doesn't that give you a thrill, Muff? Yes, Ella. Your milk. Nothing since breakfast. Of course, it was the way he said it. So simply. Oh, he has the most wonderful voice and the most wonderful eyes. Is he married? Oh, Muff. <laughs> what are we going to do with this romantic-minded niece of yours? Come in. Good afternoon, Mrs. Bishop. Good afternoon, Miss Bishop. Buddy, Hello, buddy. Well. Won't you have a cookie? Oh, thank you. Oh, Amy. Hey. Hello, buddy. I guess you're busy, Amy. Oh, no, I... Yes, buddy. Amy, those peas for supper. What was it, buddy? Not ice cream at the drugstore, buddy, <laughs> Chad. Well, Miss Bishop, I thought if Amy could... Could... please. I'll finish the oh, piece, Oh, Ella, you raise her, darling. Amy, Amy. Oh, Amy. Oh. Come on, buddy. Goodbye, Ella. Goodbye, Auntie. Good afternoon, Miss Bishop. Goodbye. <laughs> Love is certainly working wonders with Buddy's deportment. He'll be kissing our hands next. Ella, you really shouldn't have. Amy's so boy crazy. Oh, no, dear, just 14. But you never acted that way. Well, that was different. We were still on the farm when I was 14, and I was Pa's right-hand man. Remember how thrilled they used to be when he called me that? He was proud of you. I was so proud of him. Oh, Mother, I've thought about him so many times today. He'd have been so happy. Yes. Your father always said, education pays big dividends. That's true, Mother. But with a college diploma, I can teach anywhere. Just think. You and I may go to Kansas City or Chicago, maybe even New York. Here's Sam. Sam! Oh, Sam! Sam! Oh, oh. Sam! Sam! Oh, wait till I tell you. You don't have to. <laughs> Ma Bishop. Yes? The apples didn't get in today. Had them here first thing in the morning. Early, please. 
Applesauce and pie. First delivery. Cross my heart, Ma Bishop. All right. <laughs> Sam, always so reliable. <laughs> faithful old dog, Trey. I'm not too pleased with faithful old dog, Trey, at the moment. You didn't come to hear about my first day at college. Just came about some old apples. Uh-uh. New apples. September sweeting. <laughs> <laughs> what a nice name. What a nice world, Sam. And you perched right on top of it, huh? The very tip top. Are you sure you don't want to enroll it isn't too late? Look, Al. See the name on that card? Oh, I know. Something of your very own. Something you started. Not just my own, Al. Oh, good glory, it's... Sam. I know book learning isn't everything, but just wait. I'll wait. And the day you graduate... You'll help I'll... me decide which of the millions of teaching offers I'll accept. Like heck I will. For a smart girl, you sure have some mighty pudding head notions, Al. Imagine figuring you're cut out for a teacher. Well, good glory, Sam, you don't think I'm going to spend all my life teaching, do you? That's all right, then. I've got scads of time, Al. But someday, I... Oh, Sam, dear, you must. I mean, don't you see, I... I just know you too well. Well, stop. What? Stop. Stop answering questions till they're asked. <laughs> Johnny? Did you ever notice some girls take an awful lot for granted? <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Al. Goodbye, Sam. I got some deliveries to make. <laughs> Back up, Johnny. Bye. Bye, Sam. I guess there's no finer man in the world than Sam. Good glory, Mother. Now, Ella. I'm not going to be with you forever. I'd like to see you settle down. Oh, you're going to be with me for years and years. And don't worry, I won't be an old maid. I'll know when the right man comes along. But now there's, there's so much to do. made that dress herself. There isn't a girl in the class can touch her. Well, that's an understatement, Dad. There's not a girl in the whole world can touch her. There's not a really good-looking man in the whole lot. Amy. Society for Girls. First editor of the Midwestern Clarion, <laughs> and now valedictorian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sam, my hat does feel a little bit tight. <laughs> well, if I remember right, you were going to consult me about which of the many teaching You know, Sam, I haven't had one answer to all those applications I sent out. I expect it's too early to hope to hear. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Well, I thought if you knew of an opening in any of the schools around here, I mean, just the prairie grade schools, I... Well, I'm only just back from my vacation. Pretty busy with the fall enrollments, and... Uh, yes, and I'm trying to arrange for a new member of the faculty. A young woman to teach freshman English. A girl I've watched pretty closely for four years. An intelligent girl, I think. Anyway, she seems to me to have one quality which is mighty important to the teaching profession. She loves and understands folks. Preston Corcoran, do you mean... Well, of course, I know you couldn't mean... But I can't help thinking you might mean... 
President Corcoran, do you mean I... Oh, dear, dear, dear. There's a heap of repetition in that sentence. For a teacher of freshman English. I take it you're going to accept? 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 Well, if I could... If I could only... Well, President Corcoran... <laughs> Good morning, class. I want you, please, to devote the first ten minutes to the writing of a very brief theme on the subject of my favorite season. Oh, Noah. Oh, I'll have them write on some subject that will teach me something about them. I've got to understand them if I'm going to help them learn anything. Morning. Hasn't the teacher come yet? I'm the teacher. Oh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> oh, I'm just as frightened as you are. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Smith. Mr. Anton Rodchick. My life's ambition is to be a great astronomer. Of course, since I can remember, the stars to me have been comfort and beauty and like friends. Thank you, Mr. Radchek. Miss Minna Fields. Except to get learning, I ain't got no special life's ambition. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Lassel, please come to order. So it just occurred to me, Minna, that with that amazing memory of yours, you might be interested in the librarian's course. It would be an interesting job, wouldn't it, Minna? Oh, yes, Miss Bishop. But, Miss Bishop... Yes, Minna? I... I have got a life's ambition now, Miss Bishop. It, uh, it, it's to be just like you. Professor Wick studied astronomy at Yale. Both he and President Corcoran have agreed that if a student at Midwestern wants a course in astronomy, he shall have a course in astronomy. Oh, Miss Bishop. A report to Professor Wicks in the morning. Oh, thank you. Thank you. A trip. You, Sam. Only Sam, huh? <laughs> and what rugged masculine hearts are you tearing to bits tonight, Amy? <laughs> Larry Winslow, and, and what makes you think it's more than one? <laughs> it usually is. <laughs> well, tonight it just so happened that Larry has a ticket 
Somebody has a sleigh. Oh. Where they are now? Oh. Larry, Buddy, you. Coming. Oh, goodbye, Sam. Oh, and Sam, I almost forgot. Ella can't go with you tonight. She's got a sore throat. I beg your pardon, but I shall have to remind her to whom the sleigh belongs, old man. Oh, buddy. Bob Bishop. Yes? Dr. Samuel Peter, coming up to see the patient. Come up, Sam. Please get out the goose grease, the turpentine, and plenty of red flannel. Smell like a paint shop. But you'll be well in the morning. The magic touch of old Doc Peters. So... Miss Penn, what... Oh, oh, well, Mother, I thought while I was correcting things, I, I just make some uh, maple snow candy, that's all. <laughs> Professor Bishop, my foot. Good night, little girl. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Sam. Oh, uh, thank you, and, and mind you applaud loudly now. Kind of got my mind set to hiss. They sing Believe Me in Parks again. Oh, Sam. Oh, believe me if all those endearing young charms for the heart that is truly <laughs> loved and never forget. Goodbye, dear. Good night, Al. Good night, Sam. to cool and it slipped away from me so I got out after it and the window came down and locked so here I am <laughs> shall I come up a la fire brigade oh no thank you I'll, I'll come down a la rescued maiden are you sure you can make it oh positive oh, uh, oh that is if you don't mind oh no of course not I'll, I'll not only look the other way I'll I'll close my eyes. Now you can descend with a free mind. And while you're descending, I shall make all sorts of encouraging sounds, such as uh, steady there, and uh, et cetera. Oh. <laughs> oh. What, can I look? Well, I lost my slipper. Where? Oh, I've got it. Uh, there it is. Thank you. Uh, no, you don't. Don't what? Don't ruin the most time-honored romantic scene in all the world of fairy tales. Extend your tiny foot, Cinderella. <laughs> Funnily enough, my name is Ella. I'm Ella Bishop. Oh, and I'm the prince, and the slipper fits. 
So now it only remains for me to carry you into the palace. Oh, no, please, don't be absurd. Oh, don't you no, be absurd. No, oh, well, no, but Candy. <laughs> the candy. You can't candy. go plowing through snow with glass slippers. You'd catch your death of pneumonia. Then you couldn't live happily ever after. And you do want to live happily ever after, don't you? I want to be put down here, oh, please. Oh, no, 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 not on a snow-covered porch. That's bad. No, no. You know there's an old legend about this? Well, really. <laughs> Now, let me see. Where were we? Uh, oh, yes, here we are. Well, put me down this minute. <laughs> right in front of the fire. You know, when I save lives, I save them thoroughly. Thank you very much, Mr. Delbert Thompson. Oh, you're not Cinderella at all. You're a witch with the gift of second sight. No, I... I'm just a school teacher of average intelligence who lives in a small town where everybody knows everybody's business. <laughs> oh, we all know, for instance, that, that you were a brilliant young lawyer, that you're coming to live with Judge Peters, that you're to be his junior partner, and uh, underneath your picture in your class book it said, mad, bad, and <laughs> dangerous to know. Well, uh, then shouldn't you, uh, in kindness, ask the junior partner to sit down? Oh, I, I'm sorry, I can't. My mother's at a concert. Oh, we must observe conventions at all costs, huh? At all costs. Well, I'm glad to have been of service, Miss Bishop. Thank you very much, Mr. Thompson. I'll uh, pay my respects to your mother real soon. She'll be delighted. <laughs> oh, you've got one of those new contraptions. <laughs> I, I'm crazy about them. Oh, aren't they marvelous? Huh? My pupils gave it to me for Christmas. Doesn't really work, does it? Of course it does. Listen. See? It's amazing. <laughs> you know, to listen properly, one might sit down over. Oh, no, I'm sorry. No. Well, I tried. No harm done, huh? No harm. Good night. Good night. I'll call on your mother soon. In the meantime, Princess, uh, your ruby necklace is most becoming. <laughs> Horrible. Bad. Bad. Del Thompson rushing out, you mean? No, Amy, honey. Well, he's awfully good looking, Sam. Judging from the way he's swarming around Della, sure must be crazy about us. Who isn't? You've got to let me take you home, Ella. I know the prince should take the princess home. Well, this isn't fairy tales, Ella. It's real. Salute your partner. Will you? Can I? I came with Sam. Back and swing your partners to the right. Have a nice time, Al. Wonderful, Sam. Tell him. Tell him what? You look mighty pretty, Al. Tell him I'm in love with you. Head over heels in love with you. Do you, uh, Ella, uh, Ella Bishop, take this man for your lawful wedded uh, husband? <laughs> of course I do, you fool. And do you, uh, Delbert Thompson, take this woman for your lawful wedded wife? I do. <laughs> I now pronounce you man and wife. Now may I kiss the bride? Please do.
red firelight. The man you love. Children. I'm about through for this time, Miss Ellen. I expect you're glad. Standing for fittings is mighty tiring. Do you suppose the time will ever come when you can walk into a store and buy a dress already made? Oh, for land <laughs> sakes, no, Miss Ellen. Oh, I, I feel like a queen. Here. Guard it with your life, Mom. I will be. <laughs> I'd better help you. Yes, Mary. Uh, mind the train. I huh? will. Oh, Auntie, isn't it beautiful? Yes, dear, but be careful the way you handle it. I'll take it upstairs. Belle's coming for supper, and the bridegroom mustn't see any of the outfit before the wedding day. bride in the world. Bill. Amy, we're crazy. I mean, what a crazy mistake. Yes. Yes, of course. Oh, Amy, thank you, dear. Put it up in the spare room with the yes. dress. Oh, Dale, you shouldn't have seen the veil. Anyway, I hope it isn't bad luck. How could it be bad luck? Oh, <laughs> Del, I didn't mean it that seriously. You know, you aren't supposed to see the wedding finery before the wedding day. Ella, why can't this be the wedding day? Darling. We can keep it a secret until college is over if we have to, but... What? Oh, sweet. I have to go to Central Hall tonight, a special meeting. Oh, we're going to question a pupil, a girl who's been accused of cheating in an examination. Yes, but why not? I know she didn't cheat. And I'm the only one who can help her. I'm going to have a game of cribbage with Judge Peters. Could you two drop me? Of course. Mm, what a moon. <laughs> I thought you were going on the river with Larry Winslow. No, I'm tired of wasting my time on those children. <laughs> Get up, boy. Come on. Give my love to the Peters, Amy. All right. Thank you, Dale. Good night, Amy. President Corcoran. Come in, Miss Bishop. I'm sorry to be late. Not at all. And so, much as I regret the necessity, I feel that on evidence submitted, Miss Fields should be expelled. Miss Fields' paper contains whole pages from the textbook reproduced word for word. Minna, did you have a textbook in the examination room? Oh, no, Miss Bishop. I learned by heart. Oh, really? And are we asked to believe that she committed an entire textbook to memory? Please, Professor Lancaster. Why don't you ask her to repeat what she wrote? That would hardly be proof, Miss Bishop. She's had a week to Yes, an memory. entire week. Quite so. Professor Lancaster, what assignment did you give your history class for tomorrow? I asked them to read the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. And memorize them? Certainly not. Minna, have you read them? Oh, yes, Miss Bishop. I have read them and read them for at least an hour. Do you remember the declaration? I think so, Miss Bishop. President Corcoran. Miss Field, do you mean you could actually recite the Declaration of Independence after having read it for only one hour? Well, I could try, President Corcoran. Very well, child. Go ahead. Then, in the course of human events, it becomes...
necessary for one people to dissolve the political bonds which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them. A decent respect to the opinions of mankind require that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. I might have never believed it possible. Well, I admit the pupil's possession of unusual mnemonic power. Under the circumstances, I withdraw my charge. Oh, you want that I should recite the Constitution, too? Oh, no, 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 no. I saw you coming, so I waited. Oh, it's too beautiful a night for cribbage. Isn't it a beautiful night, Dal? Oh, yes, it is. A beautiful night. Oh, it would be heavenly down by the river. Could we drive down there, or...? Or what? Oh, you're afraid. the definition of a transitive verb, please. Uh, a transitive verb is a verb that... Uh, come in. Yes, Good afternoon, Miss Bishop. Come in. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Excuse me, please. Sorry, Mr. Berkeley. I had asked you for the definition of a transitive verb. A transitive verb is a verb that takes an object. Can you give me an example? Uh, to strike. Name the principal parts, please. Strike, struck, uh, stricken. I mean struck. <laughs> that will do, Mr. Berkeley. terrible, Ella. It's about... Ella, I give my right arm to spare you this. You must believe that. Just what is it you want me to believe? Are you trying to make it difficult, Ella? I'm sure Amy will supply all the lovely details. Well, 
Well, it was your fault anyway. If you hadn't left him for a stupid boy, it'd be... it's not like I'd taken anything you really cared a lot about. Ella, oh, I know what you're thinking, but it isn't so. I didn't plan anything. It just happened. If he does, you... Ella, you've got your school. Criminy, Ella, you need to be that way about it. I haven't, I mean, I didn't mean to do anything. Besides, it doesn't give you any license to treat me like dirt. That's what you're doing, you're treating me like dirt. You will listen to me. I'm an accident, I tell you. Pretty smart, aren't you? Pretty smart and pretty smug, too. Well, you left him alone and there was a moon by the river. That's what it is, there was a moon. So now he's mine. Do you understand? You can't marry him, he's mine. Oh, Ella. Ella. Ella, what are you doing? What are you doing, Ella? Dal, do you take little Amy here for your lawful wedded wife? I do. Stan? Sam? You heard that. Your witnesses. Well, guess that makes you man and wife. Oh, Dal. <laughs> what do I owe you? Oh, uh, would 50 cents be too much? It's awfully early in the morning. Aren't you going to kiss the bride, Sam? You'll have to get a move on if you're going to catch the express. Well, see here, Sam. I'll let you miss the milk train so you could get married. I don't like your attitude. No. You make me feel like a little, little I don't old... give two hoots how you feel, Amy. Neither one of you. I'm just making dead certain you don't humiliate Al. Any more than what you've already done. Busy, Miss Bishop? Oh, President Corcoran. I just received your letter. Ella. I thought it easier to write it. You see, uh, Mother and I are going to New York, President Corcoran. It's an assistant librarian's position. Oh. Oh, I see. Mm. Well, of course, it is a hard job teaching. It never pays much, and... I know. Lots of the time, it's a headache wondering if it's worthwhile. But President Corcoran, you can't feel that way. You're inspired. I mean... You give young people courage and confidence, ideals. Oh, I am trying. You see, I heard Abe Lincoln talk at Gettysburg. And he talked sense. You know, Ella, we've got something here in this country, the idea of people being free. But it's got to be taught and retaught, Ella, to each new crop of youngsters. The value of freedom. Ella, your father homesteaded on this prairie. Remember what his first corn looked like? Yes, it was small and green. You couldn't believe it would ever grow. That's it. And human beings are harder to raise than corn. But when they're raised, if they're raised right, they're worth a lot more per bushel. <laughs> eh? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know, that's a funny thing. A college is made up of bricks and mortar and students and teachers. But it can have all those and not amount to a hill of beans. And then once in the coon's age, someone comes along with that God-given gift for teaching. You've got it, Ella. That magic touch that makes young minds open up and flourish. And... <laughs> well, I, I certainly didn't intend to deliver a lecture. Of course, Midwestern must accept your resignation. Oh, but are you sure your New York library needs you as much as our seed corn here in Midwestern? President Corcoran, 
May I have that letter? It's going to be a shock. Amy's back. Amy. She's going to have a baby. Is she alone? Yep. Oh. Oh, I'm frightened. There's nothing to be frightened about. He just left. He just went away and he didn't come back. Well, he didn't know I was going to have a baby. I was going to tell him. You should have told him that. Uh, he didn't love me. He never loved anybody but you. Shh. The doctor says you need rest. You will be kind to me, won't you, Ella? You're all I've got in the world. This is your home, Amy. The water won't boil any faster for your stirring it. Why does it have to, uh, you know, does it always take... For <laughs> uh, sake, Sam, a body would think you was having the baby. Mrs. Bissett, Mrs. Bissett, hot water, please. Out of the way, Sam. Boil some more water. Water. Sam, quick! A piece of wood for Amy to bite on. gone. He couldn't save her. Now you get some rest, Mrs. Bishop. I'll drop by in the morning with feeding instructions. Meantime, Sten will know what to do. Good night. Good night, Doctor. She's a fine, healthy girl. Baby comes natural to you, Miss Ella. Before midnight, and it's almost... She'll be here, Mark. The most dashing bow in the world couldn't keep Hope away from us on New Year's Eve. So little Hopey's got a bow. Yes, one of our outstanding sophomores, President Corcoran, Richard Clark. Hmm? 
Oh, yes, yes. Fine boy, Richard. Oh, yes, Happy New Year. I was so afraid we'd be late on another. Oh, please, President Cocker. Hello, Richard. Hello, Hello Justine. Good to see you. Hello, darling. Hello. Worried, Granny? A little. Oh, Granny, you're going to be late. Well, I'm sure you are. Come on, Richard. 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 Come on, Rich
Unless this fellow Stevens. Sam, I want you to help me. I want to tell you something. Well, what is it, Al? Professor Stevens has a wife. A wife? She's in Virginia. They haven't seen each other for some time. Oh. Well, why doesn't he get a divorce? Oh, Sam, how wonderful to find someone in Oak River who doesn't shudder at the word. Al, if it's for your happiness. Thank you, Sam. Excuse me. Good evening, John. Oh, good evening, Ella. I'm sorry I'm a little late. It's all good evening, good evening, Professor. Hello, Sam. May I? Well, thank you. I've been trying to persuade Sam to stay and meet your new friend. Mr. Barry, isn't it? Yes, the little minister. I'm afraid it's a little out of my class. Now, uh, if it was Frank Merriwell. <laughs> <laughs> good night, Al. Good night, Sam. Good night. Good night, Sam. The meeting had only one witness, a weaver, and he said solemnly afterwards, they didn't speak, but they just gave one another a look, and I saw the love light in their een. That's beautiful, isn't it? The life of every man is a diary in which he means to write one story and writes another. Would you mind reading that again? Just the last sentence. The life of every man is a diary in which he means to write one story and writes another. I suppose that's true, isn't it? We dream dreams and... Do go on. Hooky in Maple City, if this is Maple City, <laughs> for a clandestine dinner. <laughs> and we'd both be dismissed if they found us out. <laughs> and I love it. Don't you? Love it. More than I can say. And have to ruin it. I had a letter today from my wife. I want to read you just one paragraph. Oh, no, John, not tonight. It has to be tonight. John, I know I was never the right wife for you. But to consent to a divorce would mean to deny the faith in which I've been brought up. I can understand. But what, what about us? Yes, what? Ah, a special wine for the lady. <laughs> Orvieto. Oviedo? I should know, but I don't. It's a little Italian town, Oviedo. It's sunny and warm. It's flooded with warm sunlight. I remember once seeing a beggar there with a beautiful flower and a ragged hat. He was perfectly happy. A beggar with a flower in his ragged hat. And sunlight. I stayed there for weeks and weeks. I ate chestnut bread with the peasants and drank the new wine, and I was perfectly happy. And I went on to Rome. I did everything the guidebook said, but it wasn't the same. Orvieto. La salute. Ella, why can't you sail for Europe in June? Why can't I join you there? Ah, a special dessert for the lady. Oh. <laughs> Checo, it's too beautiful. I, I simply can't. I could sail first and join you in Italy. Italy? Ah, a special flower for the lady. Thank you, Checo. And goodbye, my dear. Ella, please. We've had three wonderful hours in Orvieto. There are people who never go. There's no time here in Orvieto. Can't we stay? 
dreams are the only realities. Oh, my darling, is it asking too much? Too much? Or too little, I don't know. I only know that I'd stay, oh, so gladly, John, if I could follow my heart. But you and I, being as we are, there'd be tomorrow. And sometime we'll be glad we spent just this little time in Orvieto. And didn't try to go on their own. Catch my train broke, River. I know you'll understand. I'd rather go alone. Come with me to the door. Flower for the lady. Forgotten something? Forgotten something? A kiss. A special kiss for the lady. girls to see by. We'll carry it. It took him three solid hours. And he ate two pens in the better part of a pen holder. But he wrote the fee. <laughs> <laughs> Why, there's Whoa. Mr. Peters in his horse's carriage. Whoa, Darnell. Whoa. Whoa. Dad! Somebody hit her off. Here she is, Al. Come to take you home. Sam, is it safe? Why, sure. If you keep her speed within a reasonable limit. Well, got to wind her up. Horn. I saw it this morning, but look at it, a wedding gift for Richard's mother. The wedding isn't for two months. Well. Oh, Richard, how lovely. Come on in, all of you. We'll have some of Stenna's elderberry wine. All this excitement calls for a celebration. Oh, I've got a class meeting at six, Miss Bishop. Oh, just for a oh, minute, Richard. what a shame. 
As president of the senior class, I suppose you do have to be there, don't you? Yes, I'd like, like me to spin you out, Richard? Oh, gosh, Mr. Peters. Hop aboard. Thanks. There's a knack to this cranking business, Al. <laughs> Well, here it is. Without a horse. Oh, they are lovely, Hope, darling. And you shall have the most beautiful wedding dress in the world to do justice to them. Well, the most beautiful wedding dress I ever saw was Carol Allen's. What was Carol's dress like? It was her mother's. It was the most gorgeous white satin. So many girls get married in their mother's wedding dresses. Hope. Come up to my room with me, dear. Oh, Aunt Ella, it's the loveliest thing I've ever seen. You can have it made over any way you like. There are yards of material. Oh, but I wouldn't have it changed for worlds. It's, it's so quaint. Sort of in the heirloom class. Uh-huh. And it's so bridal. But it was never finished. No, it was never finished. Oh, Aunt Ella. Aunt Ella, darling, I somehow never thought. Was it for you? Yes. I know I shouldn't ask, but was it... Well, you know, I always thought that you and Professor Stevens... Made in that fashion? No, dear. Oh, no, of course not. But he did resign so suddenly last year, and so many people thought... So many people have so many wildly romantic thoughts, my dear. Do you like the dress? Oh, I couldn't have dreamed a dress I'd rather be married in. Unless... Well, you're not old, Aunt Ella. Not really old, and... Are you sure? Yes, darling, I'm sure. I have to pay the entrance fee to register? No, any time this month. All you have to do in there is just sign your name. Or, uh, make a cross. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. I ain't got no money till next week. To get me a college education, my pappy's selling two of the finest Ginny mules in the whole state of North Carolina. Let her shine. I sort of suspected you were from the South. Yes, ma'am. What's your name? John McCray. But you can just call me Snapper. I'm Ella Bishop. I teach freshman English, and, uh, you could do with a little snapper. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. I reckon I could. Ella, you're looking bonny. President Corcoran, who saw you? <laughs> Scotland as beautiful as you remembered. <laughs> oh, just as I remembered it. Even to the misty, moisty weather. And Brussels, the exposition. Well, I had rather sad news in Brussels, Ella. Oh? Yes, I arranged to see John Stevens there. You remember Stevens. But just before we were to meet, he was killed in a train wreck in Italy. Italy? Yeah. Ella. I never knew. No one knew. I'm so sorry, child. Ella, come to my office, sit down, rest. Not now, thanks, President Corcoran. You sure? God bless you, child. Oh, please, ma'am, could you tell me where Professor... There's an we... information desk just inside the door. Thank you, ma'am. President Corcoran resigning? The clarion usually prints the truth. But who's going to take his place? Who could take his place? So 
long as I am president of this university, I must insist that every member of the faculty carries out my ideas. I demanded certain changes in the curriculum. And I made them. But you haven't made them interesting to your students. You're calling me a bad teacher. Miss Bishop, for the past three months, you've reported more students than any other two members of the faculty. That usually means bad teaching. Well, I admit that lately I haven't had the same interest in my classes or my students, but I... Now, see here, President Watts, if you're asking me to resign... I'm not. I know from your past record how valuable you could be. But this college now is at the turning point. It can go ahead or it can slump to nothing. It can't remain as it is, a, a hobbledehoy in father's cast-off clothes. President Watts, I won't listen anymore. A hobbledehoy in... I'm sorry that's all you heard. Good afternoon, President Watts. Good afternoon, Miss Bishop. I'm a bad teacher. Well, you can go ahead and ruin Miss Weston, but you're not going to humiliate me. Hobbledy hoy and father's cast off clothes, that's what you said. Well, if this college was good enough for President Corcoran, it's plenty good enough for you, Mr. Watts. Ella. President Corcoran. President Emeritus? <laughs> or is it Emeritus? I always meant to look it up. Sit down, Ella, dear. Sit down. I'll... I've been meaning to come and see you. Oh, I should have come to see you now that I'm retired. You're the busy one. <laughs> I... Oh, President Parker. Why, Ella, bless you. What's wrong, my dear, eh? What's wrong? That man Watts. Oh, oh, so that's it. He called me a bad teacher. Did he know, eh? Hmm. Do you know what he said about our college? No. He said it was a, a hobbledehoy in father's cast-off clothes. He did, eh? A hobbledehoy in father's cast-off clothes? Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, that's pretty good, Ella. Well, huh? President Corcoran... Oh, he's right, my dear. He's right. You see, you and I... Knew it from the first. And so naturally, it looks big to us now. It is big. It's magnificent compared to what we started with. Hmm. But we are too close to it, Ella. Now, Watts is coming with a fresh viewpoint. Fresh is the word. All this talk about modern methods. Uh, what Midwestern needs, Ella? Why, even you, my dear, could do with a bit of modernizing. Oh, I'm not criticizing, my dear. No, 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 no. I know that you've got a heart and a mind and a spirit as potentially young as a spring itself. President Corcoran, what you don't know about handling people. <laughs> <laughs> Me, an old maid, young as spring. And me loving it. <laughs> and loving Midwestern, too. Eh? I do love Midwestern. Then help our driving friend give her what she needs. Watts is a driver, huh? That's why I picked him. You picked him? Mm -hmm. He was my choice. I believe in him. But I believe, too, he's going to need... a lot of the kind of help that you can give him. Inspector Will. Mm. <laughs> I expect I'll get to be fresh and driving myself. Oh, oh, oh. Driving. President Cocker, I'm going to get an automobile. Yes. Well, why not? Wouldn't that be a help in modernizing myself? Well, it'd be a fine start, Ella. <laughs> mm, a fine start. Well. I must be getting back to my fire, these old bones. Let me walk along with you. No, no, really, thank you, child, no. I'd really rather not. I can find my way along this river road in complete darkness. Whereas for you, well, it's, it's just the wrong direction. So you take the high road, I will. and I'll take the low road. And I'll be in Scotland before you. <laughs> I will. Goodbye, Ella. Goodbye, my dear. Goodbye. You take the high road. 
I'm sorry, President Watts, but you wanted me to learn modern methods. President Watts, a month ago I was a crotchety old maid, but I'm not one any longer. At least I hope not. Will you take an apology? Gladly. And praise be that straightened out. <laughs> Thanks to James Corcoran. Do you mind? Mind? Why, Miss Bishop, I love him too. <laughs> <laughs> Then keep on doing something for what? me. Smile. That way. <laughs> You've no idea what it does for that rock rib jaw of yours. <laughs> rock rib. <laughs> Richard and Hope living in California. Sam was the only one I could turn to. <laughs> Good old Sam. He's beginning to show his years, too. Well, why shouldn't we? Hope and Richard have been married for years. Finally had a baby. It's a girl. Named Gretchen. <laughs> oh. Why are you fine looking child? I wonder what I did with Hope's scrapbook. Might as well start right now. Uh, Hope says I'm to enter her name at once in Midwestern. I'll never forget the armistice. Gretchen had her first tooth the same day. Then the country went dry. But that had absolutely no effect on Gretchen. Gretchen and Midwestern were both growing. She's six years old now. The depression was going good by the time she was 14. Everyone had troubles those days. Gretchen's were boy troubles. It's hard to realize that Hope's little Gretchen is old enough to be a sophomore at Midwestern. Hello, baby. Are you always this late? Hello, Gretchen. Aren't you surprised to see your favorite grandniece? I haven't bothered you in ages. Not surprised at anything these days. What's the matter? Parent trouble? Plenty of it. Pour me a drop of that sherry, will you, Gretchen? Oh, they don't like this. They don't like that. One solemn, irate citizen. You know the type. I am a taxpayer. Caught his son reading Mein Kampf and blamed it on me. <laughs> What's on your mind, my pet? Love. What a novelty. This is. For one thing, he's married. It's, it's a man I met in Chicago. He's quite a well-known explorer. I see. Can't he? Oh, she won't. Oh. It wouldn't be an open scandal. I could go along as a member of the expedition, secretary or something. Oh, Aunt Ella, you can't know. I can sail first and meet you in Italy. I think I can understand. Oh, 
of anything, but about this, you've been content to stay in one spot. But I've got such a yen to go places. Magic carpet places. Rich, exciting, and warm. There's a little town in Italy, Orvieto. Sunny and warm. Flooded with warm sunlight. must be your own decision, dear. It's a big step to take, of course. But it's been taken many, many times. Doubtless often happily. Many times unhappily. There's just one thing you must consider. Reputation? No. You'd be cutting yourself off from motherhood. That's what's stopping me. I think that any woman who's half a woman... Oh, forgive me, Aunt Ella. And besides, you had Mother to bring up. Yes, darling, I had your mother. I remember the first time I had her in my arms. She was practically brand new. She was crying. I was terrified to pick her up. But I did. She stopped crying and began making little contented peeping noises like a chicken. That was so satisfying. The feel of her was, too. That warm little body against mine. But it wasn't the same. Couldn't be, could it? Flesh of my flesh. Those are thrilling words, Gretchen. One slightly used magic carpet. Mention it, Grandies. Anytime. I'll come to you. Don't worry. Then now I'm off to keep the dinner date. I rather thought I might cancel. The Buzz Wheel Ride. China and reckless romance. And now a charcoal broiled steak at Jake's Oak River Joint. With Buzz Wheel Ride. It needn't be Buzz Wheel Ride. It probably won't. But at least he's a date for this evening. So long, Lammy Pie. Goodbye, Toots. Oh, there I go again. I will not live in the past. To the future. Future. Sit down, Sam. Mm -mm. Can't help. I did, I probably couldn't get up. <laughs> Besides, I'm expecting three more old bachelors for dinner and bridge. Old bachelor. Doesn't that give you a twinge of conscience? Oh, Sam. <laughs> well, anyway, if you feel like a hand later... I might, it's that. Well, if you do, just... Just holler, Sam. Just holler, Sam. <laughs> I will. <laughs> Hope to see you later, Al. Goodbye, Sam. My dear President Crowder, you're quite right. I'm over 70, and I've been teaching long enough. You don't know how much your cooperation means, Miss Bishop. <laughs> if I were in the 60s, you wouldn't find me so cooperative. <laughs> if I were in the 60s.
President Crowder, when you came here a year ago, there were some people who felt that, that no one could fill the shoes of President Watts. Some of them even got a bit excited. Remember? Yes, I do. Well, I wasn't one of them. I learned years ago that no one irreplaceable at Midwestern. So, we've come the end of the term. But, Miss Bishop, there's so much I'd like to say to you. Don't, please. Lived our usefulness, I guess. Hi! In here, dear. Aunt Ella, haven't you even started the dress? I'm not going, Gretchen. Aunt Ella! I'm sorry, dear, I just decided. After all, I've... I've been to 51 alumni banquets. 51 times have I sat through an hour of bad food and... Three hours of bad speeches. It's no good to it. You're not fooling me one bit. Darling, I know how you must feel. Sort of the, well, the end of... If you do know how I feel, you'll run along like a good child. Have a good time. Leave me here with my, well, my New Yorker. Want to catch up on some Broadway plays? Now that I'm a lady of leisure, I may get to New York yet. Sorry, Lammy Pie, but you've got to come tonight. Gretchen, I absolutely... For a reason. Parents! Aunt Ella. How'd you get here? We flew in from California. We wanted to like call you. Pigeons. We decided we just couldn't miss the last banquet at Old Central. I had no business leaving Aunt Ella, but no business could have kept me from going to this banquet with you. And Buzz has commandeered his papa's car, chauffeur and all. Yes, Buzz has been on it too. I'm afraid I am, Miss Bishop. <laughs> so now, Miss Bishop, will you hurry and dress? Well, I expect I will. <laughs> I'll help you. Darling, this hair can't be right. It's all the rush. This. Your hair looks perfect, Toots. And you are. Aunt Ella, you look regal. And here's the final touch. Aha, uh -huh, an admirer. <laughs> oh, Gretchen. You don't know what a thrill I get out of a florist box. These are from Buzz. He was going to produce them in the car, but I thought it might be better for you to pin them on here. Orchids. Gretchen, do you know? I know we've got to hurry. Stick them on. No, no, Ella. not at the waist, Pat. Here on the shoulder. Much snappier, yes? Yes. I must, above all things, be snappy. You've got something there, darling. Here's your wrap. Miss Bishop, may I have the honor? But President Crowder, I... All for you, baby.
And now, one of her first pupils, Anton Radchek, astronomer extraordinary, winner of the Nobel Prize, Mr. Radchek. Ladies and gentlemen, friends, I'm sure that Miss Bishop will remember the day when I, a simple farm boy, said to her, my life's ambition is to be a great astronomer because since I can remember, the stars have been to me comfort and beauty and like friends. Or uh, if she doesn't remember that, I could manage to trip over another chair. <laughs> United States Senator. Senator John McCrae. Miss Bishop uh, probably won't remember Senator, but uh, if you just call me Snapper. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure she'll never forget the day that uh, I announced English ain't what I come for. <laughs> Miss Minna Fields, world-famous historian. My ambition in life is still to be just like you. For your irreplaceable gift of human sympathy, and because you exemplify to all of us what the American spirit can be, your university bestows on you the highest degree in its power. even try. I'll only say that, that I've had a long life. And in that life, I've seen the brave, the gallant, and the kind. They keep coming on. The best in this country. So now, Old Central and I are retiring to make way for modern buildings and methods. It seems an appropriate time to quote the words of our great founder, words that inspired us when Central Hall and I were both very, very young. Wisdom is the first cousin to freedom. And freedom is the glory of our nation and our people. So here's to our nation. She's young. She's growing too fast. She makes a lot of mistakes. But somehow she does manage to keep her people free. May she always.
good old dog, Trey. Always thinking of me. Sam, there's a question you've been wanting to ask me. Stop. Don't you go answering any questions till they're asked. 